Okay, we got some things. Thank you so much. Of course. <laughs> Good Wednesday everyone. How are you? Well, my parrot isn't with me because, well, I put him to bed. This is a little later than I usually record the vlog, but I have so much going on this week. I thought I'd try to get ahead and uh, get it out as soon as possible. <laughs> Well, it's been three weeks now since I got the dreaded COVID again this year. And um, as you can see, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm still uh, easily exhausted, but uh, things are still looking up. The weather's getting better. Um, hopefully it'll uh, you know, stay nice until June, but you never know, we still get snow in May. Uh, this week I did a lot of errands, and uh, which was exhausting, uh, but I still managed to get some things done. I uh, ended up spending an inordinate amount of time doing a lot of admin stuff. My print shop um, unfortunately messed up one of my orders. It's all right, it's actually pretty normal uh, for that to happen. Uh, if you can't expect them to get you know everything correct every single time. And in this case, uh, there was something even out of their hands uh, when it got shipped. The box got damaged and so some of the cards and envelopes got damaged and dirty. So I've got um, a couple more weeks till some of those things come in, hopefully sooner, but uh, that's just how it goes. This week, if all goes well, you know, it, it may or may not. I hope to go out painting not once, but twice this week. Uh, once with my uh, best painting bud, Christine. And then the next day, I'm going to paint with even more of my art buddies that I haven't seen in forever. I think we're going to be painting in Old Town, which is a really pretty part of uh, our town. So uh, I hope to take you along at least on one of those adventures, maybe both. We'll see if I, <laughs> if I have the oomph to paint and film and socialize at the same time. I also continued to uh, keep working on my heron painting that I showed you on the last vlog. And that's, you know, taking me a little longer than I thought it would because it's a little more detailed and involved than a, a quick plein air sketch. And uh, so I can only work on it about an hour at a time because then my, my damaged shoulder starts to go eh. So I have to, you know, take it easy and pace myself. I can't do, you know, four hours of painting at a stretch like I used to. So it's just been slow going and I, I just take it, you know, a little bit at a time. And I've got maybe about one or two more sessions and I will be done with Mr. Heron. After that, I'll still be doing birds, but I'm going to be doing a lot more landscapes because the weather's getting nicer and those mountains are calling me. Um, and because I'm going out painting again, I wanted to ensure that all my gear's in good repair. And I also took, the, took advantage to test out some of my brushes, my studio brushes, to see if I wanted to bring any of those with me in my backpack to go painting outside. Because usually I just use one or two brushes Sometimes it's good to try, you know, to mix things up and try something different. So I grabbed a few travel brushes and I tested them all out. I thought it'd be fun to share my research results with you guys. Okay, here are the five contenders. Number one is a mop brush by a company called Silver and it's black goat hair. Then number two is my old favorite standby, the Robert Simmons Sapphire series. Um, it's a mix of uh, hair. It's red Kalinsky sable hair and synthetic, so it lasts a little longer. Uh, then we have the Cadillac of brushes. This was a gift to me. It's a travel brush by Escoda, the Escoda Reserva. That's 100% uh, Kalinsky sable. And then over here we get a little more unconventional and I have um, a bamboo sumi ink brush and I believe that one's made up of uh, mixed goat hair. And uh, then lastly, <laughs> a kid's brush from a Crayola uh, watercolor set. Um, it says, uh, as far as I can tell, it's camel hair, you know, camel, but it's, uh, what that really means is it's most likely squirrel hair or even goat or pony. So it's kind of a, a mystery brush, but we'll see uh, how these all stack up. It should be interesting. Okay, and instead of using fresh paint, um, I've got this old paint from a project I don't know how long ago <laughs> that I did, and uh, I was going to clean this out, and I thought, wait a minute, I'll just uh, use this in testing so it won't go to waste. 
Okay, so we've got the, we've loaded up the silver mop. Uh, mops are traditionally meant to hold the most water, so uh, we'll see how this holds up here. Just really quickly go down. They're very good for washes, but they're very soft. They don't have uh, fine tips, so you can't get in much too uh, in the way of detail. Let's see that filled that all the way up, and then let's see how far down it goes on one dip of the paint. Doing pretty good. Trying to stay in the line, see how hard that is. Okay. Well, that definitely still holds a lot of paint. Look at that. I'm all the way at the end here, and there's still more to go. For number two, we're going to do the sapphire. And I use this one a lot when I do plein air painting because it's just such a good, versatile, all around brush. And it can hold quite a bit of water for being half synthetic. But you can tell it doesn't hold as much as the mop. And even though I'm working quickly here, see, check it out. It's starting to run out. Uh, now we're getting into the nitty gritty of the wash. Yeah, it's really starting to dry out now. Get some cool textures with it, but yeah. All right, so that's that's all she wrote for the sapphire. Now for the fancy pants sable with the escota. This is a slightly softer feel to it, but it is smaller than the others. So let's see how much this will hold. Uh oh, we're already starting to run out. Wow, that's surprising. Quick, let's get to the other one. Oh, oh wow, big surprise. I guess uh, smaller definitely will not hold as much for sure. Look at that. But it is a smaller barrel there on it. Hmm. This is why we do tests. And here is the Sumi ink brush. And you can tell I didn't really think it was going to hold that much. But much to my surprise, this is doing pretty well. Going all the way down here to the end. Okay, well, it's about as much as the, the fancy sable brush. Look at that. Oh, maybe even a little more. Once again, this brush I usually use for texture because it gets some really good textures. You don't mind if you mash it up as much because it's a little tougher. Okay, so there's the Sumi ink brush. And since that Sumi ink actually went further than I thought it would, um, I'm, I had to add on an extra page here for the last one, the mystery brush by Crayola that came with those really inexpensive children's sets. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's no control, it's very squishy. Oh wow, but it's, it's holding a lot of water. Just really tricky to control. Very soft. Look at that, it filled that first one, no problem. Let's go over here. Oh, and look, you can see the hair coming <laughs> off of it. Oh yeah, totally unpredictable brush marks. Kind of have to twirl it as you go. But look at that. It also held more water than the sable. Weirdly enough, my guess is once again, it's a larger barrel on the brush itself. But look at that. So in a pinch, even though it's shedding, it's not synthetic. This is some kind of... Uh, actual hair, but we just don't know what it is. My guess is squirrel from how it's behaving. Look at that. It's just no snap whatsoever. <laughs> okay, so there we have it. I wasn't surprised to learn that the mop would hold the most. That's what they're designed to do, but look how nice that was. That's definitely a, a great brush for just uh, basic washes without detail. Uh, my sapphire, Robert Simmons, held up pretty good. It's a good all-round brush. Uh, the Reserva was the biggest surprise. Um, I couldn't get over the fact that it only covered this much. 
thought it would do more, but it is a slightly smaller um, brush uh, barrel on that one. And then finally the Sumi ink, another nice surprise. Uh, could hold quite a bit of water given that it was just goat hair once again. And uh, then the Crayola, the mystery brush, held a lot as well, the squirrel brush, but we really don't know what it is. And it was shedding like crazy and absolutely no control whatsoever. But yeah, kind of a fun little experiment. Now I'm going to see if I should be replacing my sapphire when I go out painting with the mop uh, on those really dry windy days. So let's make some clouds real quick. Some windy day clouds. See how it just kind of can scrub out some little details if I need them. Okay. Don't want to touch it too much. Okay, so now that was my the, the brush that I'm the most used to using for this. And now we're going to try it with the mop that has a little more water to it. Uh, that can hold a little more pigment. Let's mix this up. Oh yeah, that holds a lot more water, I can tell. Try to do similar cloud shapes. Won't be exact, of course. Yeah, I don't have quite as much control over the shapes, that's for sure. Oop, it got a little too straight there. Now I'll go get the shadow color that I mixed up here with. Okay. And we're quick. It's very dry here in Colorado, even in the studio. Oh yeah. Mm. It's not as hard of a tip, so I'm having trouble lifting up that layer that's still damp, I noticed. Hmm. Interesting. Now this would be really good if I was working larger, I'm guessing. But for the smaller ones, that's kind of, and it also releases a lot more water when I'm softening the edges here, I'm noticing. Well, kind of has a nice effect though, if you don't overdo the water, you have to be careful because it will release a lot at once. See how I'm trying to soften that hard line there? It's like, nope, I'm going to stay. Okay. Hmm. Not bad. Yeah, it's a totally different effect. Look at that. Now I start to see why some of these British painters are partial to their squirrel, or uh, in this case, goat mops. A little hard to control, but you get some nice cloud shapes though. Look at that. That's kind of cool. Let that dry. Okay, now it's mostly dry. It's still a little bit damp, but you can, uh, oh, there's a hair. Let's get that off there. So as you can see, this is the result of when you have two different, very different brushes. You know, you got your conventional synthetic uh, Kalinsky Sable Blend. Gives you a lot more control, a lot more sharpness. And then we've got this uh, goat hair mop brush that has a ton more water retention and that, that can really behave quite differently in a dry climate like Colorado, as you can see. Yeah, so both have their place. I think this one's really good for those high and dry windy days where you can see a lot of sharpness to the cloud, to the cumulus tops. And uh, this one's good for those really soft spring days or you know days where there's rain and you want a more soft look to it. And as you can see, this actually held a lot more pigment, I think, as well. So it gives you just a little bit more to work with. But yeah, this one I had a little more control. This one is a little more chaotic, but I, I like both for different reasons. So. Yeah, I think uh, from now on I'm going to be carrying this in my kit bag when I go outside to paint.
And you know what? I just realized that this is like my fifth month now vlogging, which is, um, like I said, a new thing I've been putting into my art practice. And it's been actually pretty fun, even when I've been sick and tired. I really enjoy interacting with you guys and sharing my studio practice and what I've been up to, and I'm still enjoying it. It's been fun getting better at, you know, editing and filming, but most of all, what I've really enjoyed is getting to know you guys and seeing your comments and encouraging words. And I just want to thank you once again so very much for uh, being here and uh, sharing your time with me. This has been probably the longest video I've made, so if you've made it to the end of this, you're awesome. <laughs> So it's getting kind of late here. I'm, uh, I'm done painting for the day. I'm just going to put this into the computer, edit it, and send it out um, so you guys can see it. So once again, thanks so very much, and you have an awesome rest of your week.